with all the signings they made, it made little to no difference. Nuno came in and steadied the ship, but there's still a lot of worries going into next season. A strong team on paper that didn't correlate to any sort of performance this season. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Player Zone YouTube channel and welcome to our Nottingham Forest season recap for season 23-24. A funny old season, underwhelming once more and just surviving the drop zone yet again. They were very close to going down. Luton were sniffing right up behind them uh, as the final day approached, but safe once more. Um, but at the cost of Steve Cooper, who was sacked early in the season, Nuno Spirito Santo came in and stayed the ship, yet performances... They might have lifted, but the results didn't come and follow. And I think looking back at the season, it was a very underwhelming season at that. Struggled to put together any momentum, any before, uh, form of performances. And you didn't get to see a same Nottingham Forest team week in, week out. There was a team that would show up, the likes of Chris Wood firing. Then you'd see games where he would miss sitters and the team would struggle as well. So I think all in all, it's just a summary of the team which has been across the last 24 months. A lot of new signs, a lot of new faces and not much stability and not much consistency. And that's what's correlated to what happened on the pitch this season. I think many fans, like myself, predicted them to sort of push into that mid-table with some you know, elite quality signings coming into the club. Look at what Matt Turner joining, Matt Sells also joining as well. You see with the likes of Felipe Murillo, who's been a massive performer this season. You know, Antti Alanga joins the side as well. Tyre one year started the season off very well, but his injuries hurt the side. And it just is on paper, very solid team, but just couldn't correlate to performances on the pitch. And um, despite having one of the great home atmospheres, never really made their home ground a fortress. Actually, did probably their best work away from home, especially under Nuno Espirito Santo. But now that the manager's been there for half a season, he gets a pre-season. You're hoping they can get their act together, build a real unity and a squad mentality going into this upcoming season because they should be well and truly amongst that mid-table spot. They shouldn't be this far behind like the Crystal Palaces and the Bournemouth. They should be there and about in that sort of region there. So if those teams can turn it around, so can Nottingham Forest. I'm looking for a big turnaround next season. And we're not looking to see many more seasons like this where they're battling relegation. Let's come to their season record now. As I said, a very disappointing season. Only the nine wins, the nine draws, and the 20 losses with the points deduction taking them to 32 points, which was in 17th place and just safe from the drop zone. Best signing of the season, I've mentioned his name already, got to be Murillo, a 12 million euro signing, the 6.85 average match rating, but probably the most consistent defender for me. A lot of ins and outs back there, uh, a lot of injury problems as well at the back, but he was a constant figure throughout the whole season. You always saw Murillo back there and his ability to get the ball, be composed on the ball and win the ball back in tough situations is what separated himself from a lot of the rest. And when you look at this at the bottom half of the table and the defenders in that class, there's not many um, that can compete with the likes of Marilla because he's got that really strong um, um, build, a very strong player into the a tackle, but he's also very comfortable and versatile with the ball at his feet as well. So you know, that real modern mould of a centre-half, he's got that about him. Averages the 1.2 interceptions, the 1.6 tackles, the 4.6 ball recoveries, and the 5.8 clearances per game. The clearance stats and the ball recoveries putting him amongst to the top 10, top 5% in that category there. So a very impressive season for him to hit the ground running in the Premier League like that for a centre-half, especially in a struggling side. Says a lot about his character um, and, and him as a professional, a really solid season. And if he can kick on again next season and you build a bit more confidence around him with some uh, more familiar faces like Nico Williams refining some form there. Um, if Molina stays, continue his form, and you start building that sort of consistent group back there, you might see some improved performances. I think for Nottingham Forest going forward, I'd start to build out from the back. I think up front there's enough quality around there, but you can work that out. I think I'd work on defensive structure and midfield solidity first before trying to sort out what's going on in the final third there. But he was definitely the best signing for me. The worst signing is probably Matt Turner, £10 million transfer fee. Um, had the negative 5.45 goals prevented, so allowed about six goals in, which he shouldn't. Three errors leading to goals in only his 17 Premier League games. So came in a lot of reputation coming with being the Arsenal second keeper under Aaron Ramsdale. He was demoted once again to the third keeper with uh, David Raya joined. Um, and now uh, found himself at Nottingham Forest, but never quite got the gist, especially coming uh, off the season prior where Dean Henderson was almost heroic in his role there pumping the crowd up, making some massive one-on-one -on -one saves and the ridiculous saves. And Matt Turner's not really that keeper. He's not the shot stopper. He's the ball-playing keeper that plays some risky pass and takes the game on. 
Um, and he just didn't fit the mould for Nottingham Forest, especially under Steve Cooper come the start of the season. So Black Edemos uh, and also Matt Sells come to back in the season were the two preferred keepers. And I just think Matt Turner's in a very interesting spot right now with what he does in the future because it doesn't look like he's going to be Nottingham Forest number one. And a lot of teams in the Premier League, I can't see him jumping in ahead of some of their keepers. So does he jump to another league? It'd be interesting to see. But yeah, £10 million, a bit of a waste of money there. A uh, bit of a symbol of what Nottingham Forest have done across the last um, two seasons. And coming now to the moment of the season, which is really hard to to think of. Um, there was a lot of real struggling moments this season for Nottingham Forest. But I just think um, that start of the season for Tyre one year, it's not really a moment, but just the form he carried at the start of the season, winning them games off his own back, scoring goals for fun. That was probably the peak of Nottingham Forest's season um, where he was just <laughs> dynamic in his running, working so well with Anthony Alanga. Um, and that front duo was just... Um, carving teams apart. You maybe talk about the Manchester United result at home, which was very impressive for Nottingham Forest. Those, I guess, that result and the start to tie a one-year season are probably the moments of the season for Nottingham Forest. Outside of that, very sort of underwhelming, not many standout moments. Um, probably a, a million Murillo runs, but <laughs> no finishes to top off those crazy efforts. But outside of that, a very lacklustre sort of season for Nottingham Forest. Going to the breakout or most improved part of the season, I mentioned his name already, it's Anthony Alanga. The five goals and nine assists in his 25 starts this season makes the big move for Manchester United to Nottingham Forest. Interested to see how he would um, go at the new club. He had struggled in recent years under Manchester United being phased out and someone that really looked like he lacked that real clinical edge in the final third or that ability to play the right pass or finish his chances off. And yeah, he still has that hole in his game, but he's heavily improved this season. Still that really dynamic, pacey runner that can skip past players and his physicality. You see his build and um, some of the uh, training videos at Nottingham Forest, you can see how strong he is. He's a massive guy and he can body off defenders for fun. He can skip past defenders with his pace. So he's got that build to get into that area. This season, what we saw a bit more was making the right passes and, you know, country making the right pass correctly and not missing targets in the final third. And the goals came as well, especially the start of the season. So he's someone that really lit it up for Nottingham Forest. Him and Tyo Wanyu built such a really good duo. It's a shame he went down because it sort of hurt Anthony Langer's football as well. But someone that has done so well for his country, did so well initially at Manchester United, and I think has a really bright future. Again, he might not be that sort of 10-goal, 10 10-assist 10 type player, but he's going to have moments in season where he goes on good runs of form and he can change a game for you. He's a real X-factor type player coming off the bench or from the start. And I think it's a really underrated um, signing for um, Nottingham Forest because someone that will consistently give you effort, he's not, never going to give in. He will press hard the pitch if you want to play a pressing style of football. And as someone that can feed off scraps, right? when he came into Manchester United, he was feeding off scraps there. He sort of fed off scraps a little bit this season under, with Nottingham Forest. I think that's someone that's capable of doing that. He has multiple facets to his game, which is really good to see. I think if you develop that clinical nature in front of goal, continue to develop the passing in the final third, this is a very capable frontline player for any Premier League side and someone that Nottingham Forest will be happy they have a hold of. In terms of the player of the season, it's once again going to be Murillo, the signing of the season, and also the player of the season for me. I think he's actually been given that award um, at the Nottingham Forest Awards. Just a, a consistent player, as I said. The most consistent centre-half, someone that throughout the season you looked at him, he always performed no matter what the result was. Um, I thought about your Ryan Yates, someone I have a personal really uh, liking for. We just didn't play enough football this season. I think Murillo was there through the highs, the lows, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think... You know, the fact that he's shone out at all those games in such a team with a lot of quality players, Morgan Gibbs-White, Antti Alanga, Tayo Wanyi, um, even the goalkeeper Matt Sells, Nico Williams, he was the one that always stood out. It says a lot about his character, his player, um, and definitely someone I think that can definitely build this back line around as a more consistent um, defence line. Because I think if they build a more consistent defence around Murillo, as I said, I think you build up from the back first, you develop that part of the park, limit the chances you can see, limit the mistakes at the back, you go forward next season with a lot of confidence that you can push up into the mid-table there. Um, now coming to the priorities for next season, number one being make the city ground once again a fortress. That first season, it was such an advantage, a big place to play, um, noisy, hostile type environment. And I saw the noisy environment, but the home team didn't make the most of it at home. Um, dropping too many games at home for me, not being clinical enough in games and, and winning important games for me at home. And it just lost that real connection, I feel like. That's got to be your base. And for a lot of these bottom teams, as I said in these recaps, that's got to be where you start off with. Win your home games. If you win more home games than not, you're well and truly safe. And if you're sort of winning 75% of your home games or 60% of your home games, you're looking at a sort of a mid-table finish. So I think that's where they have to rebuild next season. Make that 
place of fortune to make the city ground a hard place to go like it was in season one in the Premier League. Um, second point is to continue to develop that front, uh, young front four. Back the tie one using back the Anthony Alangas, the Hudson Adoys, Gio Reyna as well. There's a lot of excitement amongst that front uh, three or four players with Morgan Gibbs White in behind. You sort of keep nurturing them, uh, keep having faith in them, <clears throat> and they'll continue to perform. They've got the X Factor now. They've got that difference maker. It's about getting consistent performances from them. And that's just, you're not going to get you know, consistent 38 games in these guys because they're young, they're learning. But if you keep nurturing this talent, you could be either developing a lot of money to be sold or a front four that you can have faith, can go and push on and maybe even make a push for the top half at some point in time. But I think you've got to stick by these players. They've got so much um, raw talent to be nurtured. And I think if you keep, uh, you stick by them, there's a lot to be excited about amongst those uh, front players there. And finally, number one thing it should be is keep Tyo on you fit. You know, if he's fit for 30 games next season, this team has such a better output uh, and such a better outlook as well because you saw what he did at the start of the season. He caused so much problems to so many big teams with his direct running in behind, um, his ability to hold the play ball up and work really, really well with the likes of Antti Langer, Morgan Gibbs-White. I thought you had hudson Adoy to that little um, pot there as well. You're cooking up something very, very exciting. I think they all work very well together. A one year doesn't only make the team, but he makes the players around him better as well. He doesn't only can provide for himself and score for himself. He also helps others around him look better, perform better, and just instills a level of confidence in his Nottingham Forest side. So I feel like that was the thing that was missing for a lot of second half of the season when he was out. When he was there, the difference in this side is um, second to none. It's almost like Crystal Palace with Elise and Eze. They have more confidence to go and express themselves when the Tyre one is playing. So really important you keep him fit next season. But that all being said, um, Nottingham Forest's rating, they're great for the season. I've gone with a D. Very underwhelming considering I had the mid-table. A lot of people had them to push up towards that mid, uh, mid-table mid bracket. You've got the players. You've got the signings. You just weren't consistent enough. You just weren't good enough. So I think next season is a big season, especially for Nuno Espirito Santo. Prove you're that manager who can take that big leap with your side, similar to what you did with Wolves, uh, and get Nottingham Forest place back being a competitive side at home and back being a tough team to beat because it seemed like too easy at the start of the season under Steve Cooper. Um, that being said, that brings the video to an end, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Have I got these calls on the Ringham Forest players and their season right? Um, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, smash a like on it. Subscribe to the Players and channel for more content like this. And press that post notification bell so you know when we upload our podcast or videos. With that all being said, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the upcoming football. And I'll see you guys in another video very, very soon. Till next time, guys. See you later.